Hello, everyone, and welcome to the So Heil Ali Show, a podcast where I uh, tell you what I'm thinking and uh, maybe a little bit of what I'm not thinking once a week, uh, sometimes alone. Guys, I am uh, very excited to be bringing you a brand new episode of this podcast. This is episode 48 coming to you on this wonderful Monday, September 23rd, 2024. This is uh, the first time I'm doing a solo episode in a while. I've been uh, very blessed and grateful to have some amazing guests the last few episodes, including uh, comedians Lucas Waterfill, Shanda Sung, and my good buddy Thomas Gerson. You can check out all those episodes on the YouTube channel or on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts now. Guys, how you guys doing? Man, it's been a while since I've just chatted with you all one-on-one, and I missed you. I really did. So wherever you are, uh, whatever you're up to, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great start to your week. And uh, this episode is going to be a fun one. Uh, I have a few things I want to talk about. As always, we're going to do our trending topics, talking about what's going on in the news, what's been going on in anything, pop culture, uh, anything that kind of piques the interest in Uh, By the title already, I'm sure you know what we're going to be getting into a little bit, so that'll be fun. Uh, We're going to do, of course, a weekly recap, let you all know what I've been doing in my life for the last week, what's been going on. I had some awesome shows I got to host this past weekend at the Comedy Attic. I'll tell you all about those, and I'll do a quick run through of my latest new jokes that I want to work on in the classic WTD joke segment, WTD meaning write that down. Because whenever I have a joke idea, I just type in my my notes app. Write that down, WTD. Most of the time, I shouldn't have. But it's a good time overall, and I'm very excited to be sharing that with you all. And then finally, I'll let you know about what upcoming shows I'm doing. And, uh, and I'm very excited about those. So without further ado, let's jump into it, guys. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave this uh, podcast a five-star review. Uh, give us a like on there. Follow it to stay updated. And uh, hit that bell icon or the notification icon to stay updated with all new episodes of this podcast coming out. Mondays, uh, Monday mornings on YouTube uh, around noon, uh, Monday mornings on the podcast audio. Um, And if you're watching on YouTube, speaking of the amazing website YouTube that is still yet to monetize me, I'm working on it. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like, comment below and subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, Keep supporting the channel. Uh, Give it a share if you enjoyed it and hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of the uploads. So, Guys, let's jump into this first trending topic. Uh, You already know what it is. It's in the title, most likely. Sean P. Diddy Combs, his reign of terror has apparently come to an end. Uh, Guys, P. Diddy, did you guys hear about this? P. Diddy, or as he'll be known in jail, bring that here, boy. Um, This guy, man, it is not looking good. Uh, If you haven't heard about the P. Diddy news, this is not the best way to learn about it. But this is the only way I know how to process this is by telling you all uh, sporadically on this podcast. So apparently P. Diddy's homes were raided and they found over and they found over 1000 bottles of baby oil and lotion in P. Diddy's homes, uh, to which I said, are we sure this was not Nick Cannon's home? Because he has a lot of kids. Clip that. Um <laughs> Bro, okay, hold on. Let's just, from the top. P. Diddy is being, uh, you know, indicted on all these allegations of his freaky behavior, uh, drugging women, you know, taking advantage of them. I'm trying to keep this as PG-13 as I can uh, to not get monetized, blocked, not even as if this is monetized, to not get blocked on this video right away. So just just know I'm using extreme innuendos when I'm talking about his quote-unquote freak-offs. But his hell they raided a thousand bottles of baby oil and lotion okay was this guy it's like a hand sanitizer during the pandemic was he hoarding it does he know something we don't know is this uh check the stock value at johnson and johnson guys what the heck is going on with these uh, products but uh it's true man his homes in miami and los angeles i believe were both raided and he is currently in a brooklyn jail uh awaiting his future uh, trial i think is up uh, this week uh and uh and that's a lot that's a lot to process and and honestly man i don't want to i don't like to put things out there i don't like to make a premonition that's violent or anything like that but let's put it this way what happened to jeffrey epstein a guy who had similar charges and 
at, you know, whatever level, who is connected with very high-profile individuals, what happened to him? Do we remember? It was a little while ago. It was pre-COVID, for God's sake, so some of us may have forgotten. Yeah. So I'm I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying, uh, if if Mr. Diddy or any of his associates are listening or watching, um, hit my line uh, because I have a, a very I have a strong feeling. I'm not this is my this is my prediction or my hunch. I believe I mean Mr. Mr. Diddy knows he's in a world of trouble, but I feel like they need to make sure he's in a padded, guarded area at all times, if you get my drift. Not that I'm trying to protect him. Not that I'm trying to hurt him. This is simply an objective point of view. Uh, everyone listening is like, well, just say it. They're trying to kill him. But um, I'm just saying, man, this guy ran with everybody. Who? Name a celebrity. There's a picture of them with Diddy. Anybody. Oprah. Hillary Clinton. Doctor. No, what's his name? Mr. Rogers. I bet there's a picture of Mr. Rogers with P. Diddy. I'm going to Google it right now. I swear. Mr. Rogers P. Diddy. He's, he got everybody. Um, okay, he did not, uh, he did not have a picture with P. Diddy, uh, but he did, <laughs> Mr. Rogers was known for singing many ditties, so, okay, fine, the one, the one clean guy in show business, Mr. Rogers, fine, you got me there, but, uh, but yeah, uh, what do you all think about this, man, this thing is crazy, I'm actually gonna do a quick thing here, um, a friend of mine, Brene Zimmerman, we used to work in, uh, Res Life together, she told me she wanted to, uh, to come on here and uh, and give her take on this. So let's let's give Brene a FaceTime real quick and see if she answers, shall we? So I'm doing this right now. I'm opening up FaceTime. I'm opening it up and let's see if I have Brene. Here's Brene and let's give it a quick FaceTime here. Let's see what let's see if she answers. This is live. I don't I didn't tell her I'm doing this. Oh. I think she I think she rejected it. Brene Brene, if you're listening or watching, I tried to call you. I tried to call you. I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more, Brene. Here we go. <laughs> she she has no clue, and she's probably not going to answer, but just know I tried you, Brene. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Brene, you are on the So Heil Ali show. How you doing? Wow, I'm doing good. Let me turn my light on. Alexa, light on. <laughs> she got an Alexa, man. Br- Brene's got money, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Is it? We're, we're just talking about the 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 you know what situation, and I wanted to get mm-hmm. I wanted to get your take here. I got your audio here, so they can they can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, I think a lot more stuff is going to come out eventually. Um, I think this is like, like Diddy's done a lot of stuff and he's learned from a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, but it's it's looking like a lot of CEOs are stepping down. I don't know what that has to do with the whole Diddy situation. What C- which CEOs? Do you think there's a connection? Uh, I don't know. I saw like Nike. Like it was just honestly random corporations. And I was like, what Damn. does this mean? I don't know. Well, I was like, just I, saying, yeah, I was just saying, like, name a celebrity. There's a there's a picture of them with Diddy, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Like there they was. All are, yeah, they're all friends with him, so it's just like you can't really like hide and get away from Diddy because he has a picture of everybody. So. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, uh, I was just saying, like, I, I'm not trying to put you know bad thoughts out there, but I said if I were his him or his team, I would say you know make sure there's some eyes on him at all times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, even like hearing, I don't know if you heard about like the Justin Bieber, like allegations. Um, no. And I love Justin, like mm-hmm. Justin, I am a believer. So I am I might have to be out in the courthouse with a, a sign. You know, you're going to be you're going to be at the back of a, of a sketch on, on, on the news. And say, <laughs> say he had some some fans there. Some yeah. good sign. <laughs> in the back with the sign and the sketch. Cause this is this is federal, man. There ain't no cameras in this one, but I'm not playing. I'm not playing for Justin Bieber. Um, I don't know what happened. He hasn't spoke, but um, golly, I'm so sad. Like you know that all these victims are like you know coming and like talking about like everything that Diddy has done. But like Justin, I don't know if he would ever say anything to be honest. Right. I mean, you know, he just had a kid. You know, he's just trying to you know get his yeah. life. You know why? I mean, yeah, his middle name was Diddy, but the other anyway, um. 
uh, you know, they, <laughs> they, uh, I said, uh, a thousand bottles of, of baby oil and lotion. I said, are we sure this was not Nick Cannon's house? Because I think, <laughs> I'm just saying, are we, are we sure? But. No, that's a good one. I most definitely was very confused about the, I was telling my friends, industrial Costco size baby oil. <laughs> And that was the said, scary boom. part. I was like, "Why was that? Like, why were they that big? It just that's that's the question." <laughs> well, you know, you, you, yeah, buying bulk. You, he's got coupons. He's bringing to the <laughs> sir exhibit C <laughs> into the evidence the coupons. But uh, Brene, I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for uh, giving your take here. I'm sorry to surprise you here, but I said I said I gotta call Brene and uh, and get her on here. So thank you um, so hard. Yeah, we'll catch you up soon, okay? All right, bye-bye. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. That was an uh, amazing uh, friend of the show, uh, Brene Zimmerman, everybody. So uh, thank you, Brene, for your for your take there. That was a lot of fun. And hey, man, this is the thing. If I FaceTime you randomly, you might be on this podcast. So hit me up if you want to call, and we can always chat about what's going on. So uh, that's what I'm saying, man. This thing is crazy, and, uh, and there's, whew, like Brene said, there's more to come. So be sure to follow. We'll be talking all about it. This is now the official uh, following trial of P. Diddy's podcast, apparently. But uh, no, this is going to be one of many things we talk about. Um, I wanted to talk about this next story here. Uh, this was a crazy clip out of Ohio. Uh, apparently, an eight-year-old girl got in their parent's car and drove it all the way to Target. This is true. Spent over $400, got a Frappuccino. Eight-year-old girl. And she made it all the way to Target. There's a video, a dash cam video came out from Ohio of, uh, of someone else's car, obviously filming this eight-year-old girl driving. She's swerving on the road, left and right. She's going all over the place, going to Target and uh, just, you know, doing what a typical eight-year-old does. Going to Target, spend over $400 on your parents' credit card and uh, get a nice little Frappuccino. That's a pretty good day, if you ask me. That's a pretty good day. Uh, did you guys see this clip? It's, it's a hilarious clip. Um, basically, I mean, you couldn't, I, I was just trying to stay home alone when I was eight years old. I, I wasn't allowed to, I don't think till I was 10, but you tell me at eight years old, this girl knew how to get in the car directions to target buy $400, $400. You, I couldn't even pay for Yu-Gi-Oh cards at eight years old. Are you kidding me? I had two pennies to my name. One of them I painted purple and this girl managed to spend that much money at target. That's like. That's friggin', that's, uh, that's, that's stay-at-home, uh, mom-wife, uh, amount of money there at Target, but also at the same time, $400 at Target is, uh, a pack of gum and a pair of sneakers, if we're being honest, but, uh, a Frappuccino, they said the, uh, the officers that, you know, brought her home allowed her to finish that Frappuccino, which, to which I said, also, you know, that's a lot of sugar for an eight-year-old, so if you thought driving the car was crazy, I don't know what her next plan is gonna be with all that sugar in her diet, tuh. All right, clip it uh, because that was a good one too. But uh, let me know what you think. Did you guys see this? Did you see this uh, crazy video? You got to see it. Look it up. Eight-year-old Ohio Target drive, and uh, look at the way she's swerving on the road. Not bad. She's going pretty fast, but not bad. I said she should be a race car driver. That's what I said. I said this girl needs to be a race car driver. Are you kidding me? Uh, what an origin story. What an origin story. Are you kidding me? Of course she needs to be a race car driver. Put the st put the frame. Put the screen cap of her driving on um on like t-shirts and stuff it would sell like crazy the next danica patrick right there i'm telling you all right clip that for sure um but yeah comment below if you saw that let me know what you thought uh moving on to the next trending topic here we'll get into a couple more things but i want to talk a little bit about uh, a topic very close to home and that is indiana football i know i know even i'm surprised because if i had said hey guys let's talk about indiana football Anytime, my entire life, you guys would have been like, good one, dude. Good one, dude. What is it? April Fool's? Ha <laughs> Good one. Nah, man. I'm serious. Indiana football. Oh, baby. We are, I'm an alma mater and I work for, I'm an alma mater. I, I went to the school and I work for it. We are 4-0 and under new coach, Kurt Signetti. Sigs for Signetti, baby. I don't smoke, but I'm I'm considering it. Kurt Kurt Signetti, uh, with the best mindset 
and uh, a brand new team has led the Hoosiers to a 4-0 start. And I attended the last game versus Charlotte, the home game, uh, where they blew them out of the water. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, a team that maybe won't be the most competitive, but it was still a great performance at home and a hot day. Man, it was hot, I'll tell you. Noon kickoff, we were there uh, just baking in the sun. You can probably see some still of the, the residual effect on my my face there because I put only so much La Roche Posay. That's a sunscreen, not anything dirty, on my face. And, uh, you know, you only can cover what you can. But IU football, man, it's exciting. All right, it's exciting. There's a lot of excitement around it. We're 4-0, yada, yada. This Saturday is the real test against Maryland. At home again, noon kickoff. All the IU fans need to come out. If you're in Bloomington, if you're a Hoosier, you got to come out and support the Hoosiers, man. we got to pack Memorial Stadium. It's going to be amazing. 12 o'clock kickoff. I can't wait. I'm going to be there. Caroline's going to be there. It's going to be a great time. Uh, are you an IU football fan? Follow if you are. Subscribe if you are. We want to have all the Hoosiers on our side. And let's talk IU football, man. It's been an exciting time. Quarterback Curtis Rourke, killing it. Canadian legend. Uh, Canadian Curtis, if you will. He's killing it. Uh, throwing bombs, throwing direct hits, and it's a great time. The defense is great. It's all great. It's a good time. It's 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 fun to be good, finally, in a sport. You know, I mean, look at the numbers. It's like the attendance numbers are low. All these things. We're the we're the losingest D1 program in football history. That is, it's pretty impressive if you think about it. We're that bad. We're the worst. How bad are you? You're not worse than us. And now we have a shot at being relevant, at being exciting, and people are attending. It's fun. It's a fun thing, and I'm excited to be around for it. So, hey, man, IU football, man. Come support. Come check it out. We need people there. We need the support there. Okay. Uh, Moving on to uh, this next thing here. Uh, You know what? We talked about, uh, you know, Thomas and I talked a little bit about this uh, in our interview, in our, you know, episode last week about the debate. And all the things that Trump was saying during the debate about the Haitian migrants and they're they're eating dogs, you know, remember that? So that's really blown up. Everyone talked about it last week. And it's, you know, I read a little bit about this last week, how much this has impacted this poor town of, uh, I think it's Youngstown, Ohio, uh, Springfield, Ohio, uh, where these people are just trying to work hard and live the American dream. And and suddenly, you know, they're being harassed and, uh, and racially um, profiled and, and being uh, attacked just because of all these things people are hearing. It's all fear mongering, dude. And it has a real effect. It really does. And it's just ridiculous. I know it's supposed to be comedy. It's supposed to be lighthearted, yada, yada. But like, I just have the headline I have here. I'll be honest with you guys. is just Ohio governor sending state police to Springfield, uh, to Springfield after bomb scares. People are send, like calling in bomb threats to the schools. They have to cancel school. Like what the hell is going on here, man? I'm not trying to, I'm not upset. I mean, it is upsetting. But um, the point being, you know, all this stuff that these people are spewing just to get people's votes to sway them, it has real impact, has real uh, results. Um, But at the same time, I saw a great story, a great feel-good story out of James Madison High School in Virginia. That's where our our coach actually came from, JMU. Um, James Madison, Virginia, a group of high school kids got together with parents and organized a GoFundMe to buy uh, one of their high school janitors a Jeep Wrangler, his dream car. And the janitor was a, I think, uh, an immigrant from Ghana, uh, or, or an African nation, uh, working hard, you know, custodian of the school, always encouraging the students. And that's a great story, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, do I want a Jeep Wrangler? Yes. I'm not willing to do custodial work for it. But yeah, he deserves it, man. He deserves it all. And it was a beautiful, heartwarming video that shows you, you know, the other side of things where Americans or quote-unquote white people can be welcoming and appreciate immigrants and love them and, 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 and they have value for them and they provide value and it's a great thing. That's what it's all about, really, if you think about it, not tearing us apart. So all this to say, with politics, with the news, with the election, try to not just take one side. Like, yes, you can identify more so with one side. Uh, this is stuff that you know I tell myself, but try to... Be open. Take everything openly and form your own opinions, right? Don't just, you know, take whatever people tell you. Uh, I sound like, you know, a news source that would not get many views. And giving by the news of this one, uh, the views of this one, you can probably understand why. But, um, no, I appreciate you. If you're watching and listening, I, I love you. I appreciate you. But you know what I mean? That's kind of what I think about all of that. Uh, not really anything funny or joking there, haha. But uh, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're talking about with that. Okay, um, you know what? We're going to jump into the weekly recap here, guys. This is where I 
tell you all about my week, what I've been up to, uh, what happened last week, and uh, what I want to share. So uh, last week, uh, this past weekend, Friday and Saturday, I had the great opportunity of hosting uh, the weekend shows for headliner Max Mantikoff at the Comedy Attic. Uh, really fun time. Uh, the feature was Erin Depke. Uh, she started in Bloomington, a uh, good friend of ours, and uh, she's now in New York City killing it, doing comedy and uh, and doing the thing. So, yeah, we had a great time. It was actually Erin's birthday yesterday, so happy belated birthday, Erin. Uh, she baked some cakes. It was amazing. Uh, really fun time. The show's Friday. First show was a little light, but the rest of the shows were great. Uh, Max was awesome, very funny guy. You should follow him, Max Mantikoff on Instagram, and uh, and Aaron Depke as well. Be sure to follow them. But it was cool, man. I, you know, with hosting, the host obviously kicks off the show, sets the tone. You know, you're the first comedian they see, you're the first one telling jokes of the night. So you want to set the tone right. You want to make sure there's good energy going into the feature and the headliner, and that's your job. And I take it very seriously. I really do. I try to, you know, tighten up my set. I, I listen to it. And, you know, as the host, you're not going to get, like, the biggest laughs of the night, obviously, because you're just still warming people up. But you can listen. And you can see, like, what resonates with people early on. Get to your first joke as quick as you can. You know, keep it going. Have momentum. Uh, just show, make sure you show that you're having a good time. These are all things that people, including Shanda, uh, Eric, all the people that I look up to in comedy have been doing in a while, have told me it's like yeah it's just about you know if you're having a good time they'll see that that energy is infectious and you kind of want to lead with that so you know these are kind of hosting things that i think about anytime i do that and uh, and that was really fun so uh shout out to the comedy attic uh the staff everybody there it was a great time and uh and yeah we went to the iu game like i said on uh on saturday as well so that was fun uh, i got to see iu go four and oh and uh and it was cool and we actually stayed till the end of the game no excuses, man. It was 90 damn degrees, 3 o'clock on a Saturday, hot, sun beating down, but me and so many others were still there cheering on the Hoosiers, clapping them off, and uh, it was just a fun time, man, because that's what Coach said. He said we need people to stay in the stands, and so we did, and, uh, and that's why we stayed. Um, okay. Let's talk about some new jokes, shall we? And with new jokes, I mean new half-baked ideas that I'm just going to take this time to riff on a little bit, if you will, guys. So please uh, spare me and humor me while I just take you through the messscape of my notes list. This is just a helpful time for me to flesh out new bits. It's called WTD Joke. Write that down. Let's work it out. Here we go. So I moved in with my girlfriend recently, and uh, you know, it, it's really pointed out a lot of differences in the way we live our lives, my girlfriend and I. Like, uh, for example, she asked me uh, yesterday, she said, so when are you going to dust? To which I was like, I, I think I went four years without dusting in college. I, like, dust, is that, um, is that a new thing they're working on, dust? I, uh, I, I, I um, you know... Sorry, I'm just writing down anything that came to my mind. <laughs> you know, they just invent that. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> she's, you know, healthy and focuses on sleep. She taught me what a duvet cover was. And I was like, let's not bring the French into this. Like, she, you know, does her laundry every so often. Uh, I need to be reminded that I have to do laundry every uh, really often you know uh what do i got here she taught me i can't sleep she taught me i can't sleep until noon and i said i can i'm just gonna feel depressed afterwards you know what i mean like i can do it don't tell me i can't don't tempt me now i'll do it uh i may not feel good at all but i can do it all right so there's a difference between can and you know cannot clearly um well maybe there's something to be said there uh, i'll definitely be writing that after this and trying it at the hoppy wobbles open mic tonight at uh 7 30 8 o'clock we start uh if you're in bloomington and you want to try out your jokes or come watch some open mic comedy it's always a fun time sign up at 7 30 and show starts at 8 as always um what else we got here uh oh okay this is fun so you can see those watching can see i'm wearing it i'm wearing my uh my necklace here, this is a what we call an ism Allah, or the name of Allah, or God. So it basically has God's name in Arabic. And uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was with uh, one of the staff members of the Comedy Attic, and they walked up, and they're like, hey, what's your, uh, what's your pendant? What does it say? And I told them, I was like, oh, it's an ism Allah, or the name of Allah. It means it's God's name in Arabic. And they were like, oh, that's fun. 
Oh, I'm so I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is kind of it is fun. Yeah, uh, you know, usually uh, Allah and Allahu Akbar are not usually associated with fun. It's it's usually uh, you know at least as the media portrays it. A lot of bad after that, but, uh, you know, uh, it's depending on how you look at it, the kind of light you look at it in. Perhaps it can be fun. I don't know. I thought it was fun. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. It can be fun. Mostly it's pain. is scary, I think, is the idea there. But uh, it can be fun, um, you know, depending on the light or the lightning at the time, I guess. Um, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. This is how it's working out, man. I like where usually, usually... Islam is a religion of peace. Are you kidding me? Look at two billion Muslims in the world. But uh, from what we know, most of the time, um, it, this is these are jokes. Usually not so uh, fun at the end. Uh, <laughs> so maybe there's something there with the with the necklace. Um, what are we talking about here? Getting older means saying stuff like it's gonna rain Monday, and good thing because we need some goddamn rain because <laughs> we goddamn need some. Yeah, that is. Um, and by getting older, I mean being 26, I guess. I don't know. I literally found myself saying, um, yeah, uh, it's going to rain Monday. And a good thing, too, because we could goddamn use some, you know. Have you seen how brown these trees are, These this grass? It's crazy. <laughs> it's like I didn't know. I didn't think by 26 I'd be concerned with agriculture this much. Being trying to walk outside and being like, you know, it'd be nice, it'd be nice to see some lush grass while I get my steps, you know. This is 26. This is I'm I'm, I'm living the life of a retiree, apparently. Going outside and, you know, hearing the birds chirp and, uh, you know, feeding the squirrels and stuff. But, but yeah, I literally said that. I was like, man, good thing it's going to rain too. You know, my knees are, my knees are clicking. I think it's coming. So the joke there is I feel old at 26, I think is the joke. Great. Good job, buddy. Those are the, the hits, aren't they? Um, well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, guys, uh, I think I'm just gonna gonna wrap it up here soon. We're gonna talk about some upcoming shows I have going on. If you are in and around the Bloomington, Midwest, uh, Indianapolis or so area, we had the we well, had the hosting sets, and uh, those were great. So um, this weekend, actually, we'll be back. I'll be back at the Comedy Attic uh, Friday and Saturday, September 27th and 28th for Best of the Fest. This is the best of the Bloomington Comedy Festival, and I'm uh, fortunate enough to be on this show. And we're doing uh, two shows each night, 7 o'clock and 9.15 on Friday and Saturday at the Comedy Attic here in Bloomington. Get your tickets now at ComedyAttic.com. And then, uh, and then yeah, I'll, I'll tell you all about what else is coming up down the pike after that. Um, but, yeah, feel free to leave a comment let me know what you thought. Let's start a conversation in the comments on this episode. Let me know what you're thinking about. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. Uh, follow your dreams, all that cliche stuff. Uh, you know, uh, have corn on the cob, have whatever you want. Uh, but be sure to floss it out of your mouth afterwards. Um, but guys, uh, really grateful if you made it this far. I really appreciate you all. This has been another episode of the So Heil Ali Show. And uh, I really appreciate you all. So like, comment, and subscribe. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you all. I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye. Real quick before you click away, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all future videos. Hit that bell icon to be notified for all uploads. Have a good one.